one of the events that really got people's attention was a tree fell on a house and it went through the roof and it came very close to hitting a young child. She was about four years old. And so people who hadn't been paying attention finally said, we know that there's a stormwater issue back there. There's a lot of erosion and we don't know what to do. So after we realized that we needed to bring the three neighborhoods together and we also needed to find some financial supports, we started exploring were there some public private partnerships that could really make this work and, and help this, this problem. And fortunately, um, the first effort we went to, um, I knocked on the door of the Orange County Soil and Water and there was a fantastic person there who said, yes, we might be able to work with you. And so she and the Piedmont Conservation Council, we, we put together a, a small grant to the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, pulled in the town of Carborough and Owasa and these two other adjacent neighborhoods. And we submitted a grant, which unfortunately did not get funded. But what it did do was solidify the partnership that we just needed to continue to seek solutions and we really started to get the HOAs to work together. So then after we didn't get that first grant, um, the town of Carborough had set up a stormwater utility and I sat down with Randy Dodd who is the head of the stormwater team and asked him if there was any way we could consider partnering and the town was going through the process of setting up a plan for stormwater and having some budget available which was required in order to be able to apply for an EPA grant. So as the town was was getting ready, um, I think they were looking at this as maybe a, a good model for how any neighborhood could consider sort of working together with the town and other partners to manage this, this problem. So we submitted a new grant, the town of Carver submitted a new grant uh, to the EPA and fortunately it was funded. And so um, that helped support the engineering, which really has, We've had so many big rains, even since this was just recently completed. And you can just really see how this design um, manages water in a really different way. Regenerative stormwater conveyance is uh, a, a newer uh, stormwater practice that incorporates aspects of, uh, of uh, bioretention and uh, media filtration with uh, stream restoration practices to create a conveyance system that can move water from one location to another safely while reducing erosion, uh, while also getting additional treatment benefits associated with nutrient filtration and pollutant absorption to media. Uh, this device uh, behind us here is an RSC. Uh, that was constructed at the Bowen Forest community. Um, this area previously was uh, included a small uh, natural conveyance, which was generally eroded and uh, bare of vegetation. Um, and that, that existing system exported uh, quite a bit of sediment and pollutants to the Bowen Creek. Um, which is a 303D listed stream. Um, so we uh, received funding to design the system uh, to stabilize the conveyance and provide stormwater treatment. Going. I'm Christopher Son. I'm County Engineer for Orange County, North Carolina. Today you're looking at our EPA 319 grant, the, uh, the fruits of labor for about six years of, of work between a big group of partners, over 20 partners, came together uh, with this project. Nine private property owners, including seven uh, single family lot owners over here. So it was a big collaborative effort, years and years in the making. And the whole goal was to protect Bowen Creek, one of our resources here in, um, in Orange County. So what this does, this is called a Regenerative Stormwater Conveyance, RSC for short. What it does, it, is, it gives the water time to infiltrate into the, into the earth, slows the water down a little bit, stops that scouring from happening, and also takes out some nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, to just improve the water quality as it discharges down here at the end, the bottom of the hill. This is a neat perspective because you see as you go upstream about 800 feet, that RSC goes through nine private properties, two HOA properties, 
and seven private property owners for single family homes. They all had to sign agreements allowing the system to go in there. They had to grant an easement to the HOA and ultimately it's the HOA that has to maintain this thing in perpetuity. So along with the construction and engineering of this thing, there's also an operation and maintenance manual that has to be followed. And essentially that just says, hey, if something breaks, if something gets clogged, if something dislodges, the HOA is obligated to go in there and fix it with property owners previous permission. So they have a swath of land here that's granted as an easement. So in perpetuity, this thing will always be protected and will always protect that creek down there below us. That's the whole goal of this project. Uh, water does not care about property boundaries. Water goes downhill. So it's great when we humans can come together and understand that perspective. The water doesn't care about your property boundaries. Let the water come through as it's gonna come through, work together to, to clean that water up and help protect our drinking water supply. So it's been a great project to thank everybody who's been involved with it. We hope to see a lot more of these in Orange County and beyond. Here in Carborough and in our neighboring town, Chapel Hill, we've been <clears throat> working on projects related to trying to restore the health of Bowling Creek for going on 20 years now. And um, because we developed a watershed restoration plan for Bowling Creek back in 2012, we set the stage to get grant money um, from EPA through the state to help support projects like this at that time. Um, and uh, we, uh, we in Carver and in Chapel Hill have the experience and also we're the eligible um, entity or applicant that can apply for these kinds of grants. And so um, that's been our role. It's really been the grant applicant and the grant administrator. The local residents here, um, the three neighborhoods and, and many, many people in these neighborhoods came up with the idea for this project. I think it was about seven years ago initially. And, um, and then about four years ago, we met with them. And, uh, you know, and, and that's where the idea for applying for this grant that supported this project came from. So something that I have really appreciated about this project uh, in my 16 and a half years working with the town, this is perhaps the best example I've seen of um, a, a really great collaborative effort. Um, there's uh, not only three homeowners associations and dozens and dozens of residents that live right adjacent to this project that have all um, actively participated and been part of helping make this happen. What I would say to another neighborhood is if you're starting to see any kind of problem, um, you know, really figure out who, um, who the stakeholders are, like who might be the, is it a, a household, is it an HOA, is it happening in a broader area and really kind of just get a clear sense of the problem and then as far as the solution goes i think the town is now hoping to encourage other neighborhoods to do something similar and so sitting down with the town staff about um, assessing assessing it would be helpful when you're trying to do something like this you do need to take the time to really connect with people, build relationships, build understanding, and a lot of it really is education. Water doesn't care what your property lines are. You know, water runs downhill, water sort of erodes, but yeah, the, the different ownership didn't make a difference um, to the problem, but it was essential to having this, those groups come together for the solution. We, we in town government, we've just been kind of um, benefiting from all of, all of the efforts of all these other people, and it just has been a great example of how how, you know, to me, one of the big lessons learned for this is that for projects like this to um, come to fruition, it really does require a village as the saying goes. And, um, and this has been an example of that happening. And so it's been really a joy and a, something I've really um, appreciated the opportunity to be a part of.